All right, welcome back again, guys. It's Vicki with my garden evolution. And this is gonna be an update on my terrace garden. So in front of my house, we have this beautiful wall, terrace situation going on. Um, this was built by the previous owners who actually, oddly enough, live right here. So my neighbors used to own this house and then they bought that house and moved into it and sold this one. Um, so yeah, they are the ones who made this beautiful terracing happen. And I'm very grateful for that. That was one of the reasons why I decided to buy this home. I thought it was beautiful, but it was previously just grass and that was extremely challenging to mow as it's very sloped. And as we get closer, maybe you can see that, um, you know, from the bottom of the terrace to the next level, it's like, it's like this, like it's pretty steep. So I didn't like the just grass look. I didn't like how hard it was to mow. And I thought, what a opportunity to put something beautiful here. And I'm just gonna be frank with you, it's taken me four years to get it to this point. And I think this bottom terrace is looking really good. Um, but my second terrace, the middle one, is still very much in work. Um, there's just a ton of grass and weeds up there, but I'm constantly adding more plants and moving things around. And as I do that, I'm going through and tearing out the grass and stuff. So hopefully, hopefully by the end of this year, I have that second terrace, you know, kind of where I want it to be at. Um, but anyway, enough about that. Starting over here, I have some lambs here on this bottom row. Um, I think it fits in here well. And another reason why I like lambs here, I have it again down on that section. It doesn't need a lot of water. And when I'm watering the garden, none of this is irrigated. So when I do water, I'm usually just spraying my hose from above and trying to hit all this stuff. <laughs> um, so it's helpful that this particular area is lambs here, which doesn't need a lot of water. Like our just natural rain is typically plenty. Um, in the future, I want to get this type of stuff repaired, replaced. But for now, I'm just trying to hide it. So anywhere that I have broken stone, you'll see that I've planted things that will drape over eventually. So I've got like some potato vine and some vinca and these uh, wave petunias. And that's what I'm trying to do there. Same over here. This one's missing its entire stone. I also planted some um, hens and chicks along the side. I've got a ton more of these in my backyard and I think I'm going to move them all up here and just start filling in along the edges like that. I think it's really pretty. I haven't remulched yet this year. I might do that this coming up weekend. This plant right here is just regular oregano that I bought. And once I planted it, I realized it was gonna spread and be like a ground cover sort of, except for that it gets really tall. So I guess I wouldn't call it a ground cover. I'm just letting it get tall like this to see what it looks like in bloom. And then I'm planning to cut it back down low again because I like it when it's just like a low mounding plant. It looks really good and green all year, but yeah, let's see what it looks like when it blooms so I can decide if I want to let it bloom again next year. Again, another little combination here of my wave petunia, potato vine, vinca. Right here I have a geranium and I can't tell you how excited I am about this because this is finally growing. I've planted geranium every year for like, well, let's see, I moved in in 2020. So 2021 would have been the first year and this is 2024. And this is the most successful one I've had yet. <laughs> so I just have not had the best luck with hardy geraniums, but I love them. I love them in other people's gardens and I'm determined to get it going in mine. So this one appears to be taking off and should give me some decent growth this year. Hopefully it will kind of come filling down here a little bit. This is a hardy hibiscus. This will get four to five feet tall and wide. Um, this yarrow has kind of collapsed over here, so I need to work on this situation, but it's still looking beautiful. It's just that it's coming into the space of where the geranium and also where this hardy hibiscus are going to be filling out. So I, I really need to get that staked up. And what I think I'm going to do is when it's done with this current flush, 
is cut it back by like half shorter again it'll reflower but then it will be more in control and hopefully not collapsing over here and then it'll give these plants a chance to fill out like they're meant to do um, behind this I have a foxtrot pedicetum grass um, which will also continue to get quite a bit taller and then this one in the corner that is absolutely huge is a monarda also known as bees balm um, it's not particularly bright it's like the really light purple kind and it also gets um, what is that mold I forget what it's called, but it's like this dusty, moldy looking appearance to it. It happens like every year. Um, so again, after this blooms, I should have done it in like maybe late April or early May. I should have cut this back so that it would not be as tall. But after this blooms, I'm planning to cut it down by probably like half because I believe it will still rebloom anyway. But even if it doesn't rebloom, I want it to be shorter than that. It's too tall. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on with that. I might eventually replace this with a more a type that's more resistant to that um, mold issue that I'm talking about that I can't think of the name of it right now. But the yarrow is another thing. So I just planted this yarrow last year. So this is its second year. I didn't realize how tall it was going to be. So at this year, at the end of the season, I'm planning to, well, I'll probably just leave it at the end of the year, but in late winter. So next spring, late winter slash early spring, I'm going to dig all the whole clump up and I'm going to move it back toward the wall so that it's just a little bit further in behind and then I can plant something in front of it. But I absolutely love this yarrow. It's gorgeous. I've got it in a couple other places going down because I just fell in love with it last year. And I like the different colors. I started out with this red just because that was the first that I found on clearance. And then I found this pink on clearance. I really like the pink more honestly but it looks very pretty together that's not something I would normally think to pair together and yet I think it looks really pretty over here I have some blue salvia I'm not sure of the exact cultivar it's also kind of collapsed a little bit to the side there but um, it still looks really pretty I'm going to be cutting this back. This is the kind of salvia that will rebloom throughout the summer if I keep shearing back after the buds are no longer looking great. Um, right here, this super dark foliage. These are some dahlias that I just planted back on Mother's Day. And I do really like them. Um, I'm just not sure. I don't know. It's their first year. Well, with me, obviously. See, I, I don't know. Like, when it does this. Okay, that's... A dead flower bloom should I take that off or is this gonna rebloom or is this like a seed pod I I don't know what to do with it so I don't have a lot of experience with dahlias but most flowers if you deadhead them they will rebloom um, but I don't know if that's the case I'm just kind of leaving them alone but they are really pretty flowers I hope that they get taller and if I'm not too lazy in the fall I'll dig up the tubers so I can replant these again next year otherwise these probably won't come back for me in the back here, kind of tucked away, I have some black-eyed Susans, and those will, of course, get much taller later in summer. Once they start blooming, they'll be, you know, bright yellow with, like, the black centers. Got some Dianthus here in the front. I have several of these that I kind of have planted along. Actually, I guess I only see three now. I thought I had more than that, but maybe the others didn't make it, um, which is okay. I was just mentioning that I don't even really like them very much, to be honest. Um... They're looking better than last year, but after the flowers die, they kind of get this gross brown appearance. And then like once the whole thing is covered with that, it just doesn't look good. But I do like the short grassy texture and it's something that works for the front of my beds. So because my beds are so sloped, um, I have a problem with either the soil or the mulch or whatever I'm putting here um, washing off. And then my sidewalk always looks like a disaster. And then also, you know, just like whatever I'm putting in here is coming out, which is not good. Um, I would really like to invest in, you know, a lot of compost and putting that down instead of mulch, but it would just wash away. So I'm trying to really plant things toward the front that will be a barrier to anything washing down. 
So we'll see how well that works out, but that's kind of what I'm doing. In this section, I have a lot of sedums, cactuses, like just low growing things that are kind of, I guess, deserty. I just think it looks cute. Um, I've got my little log here that had this hollow section, so I planted hens and chicks in it. And I love that. I'm planning, now that I know they're the same type, I'm planning on moving this lily over to this grouping, this little two that I have. So I'm gonna add that one over there and I think that'll look good. Um, and then I'm really happy with that rose bush back there. I don't know what type it is. That was something that was given to me as a gift many years ago. And yeah, it's one of my first roses actually. Uh, they're finally blooming. I've got my Stachys humilo back here. These are a type of lamb's ear. You can kind of tell that the, the foliage looks a little lamb's ear-esque. And they get these tall purple shoots. They're really pretty. So excited about those. I have a small little arch of ham elm grass that goes like right there in front of them and behind that log. And then this silver plant right here is a type of artemisia. I think it's David's choice. Okay, so on a recent video, I believe I mentioned that I planted this at the front because I thought it was going to like trail over. I was wrong about that. This is a type of yarrow, so it's like one of those, but it's a, a smaller, shorter type. And this is what it looks like. It does not trail over the front, but I think it's adorable. And I really like it in this kind of desert-esque rock garden type situation that I have going on. I'm also thinking about adding rocks in here, by the way. So that's another change that might happen. We'll see. But I found a bunch more of them on clearance. So if you look, I've got one here, one here, one here, one there, one there, one here, and one here. And all of those new ones were just planted like in the last week. So they're not blooming yet. But when they do, that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to have those cute little flowers kind of popping up throughout this little area. And I think that's going to be gorgeous. Um, what else? I don't know the names of all these sedums, but some of these will grow over the side eventually. Like this one right here should, I believe, continue working its way. Um, I don't know if this one will, but this is like the kind of that stays that blue texture. I don't know, just gorgeous, very happy with it. Um, these are kind of starting to go out of bloom. In fact, I've already cut back these salvia right here because they were definitely out of bloom. These I'll probably be sharing back fairly soon. But about a week ago, I wish I could have caught it on video, when this yarrow first started blooming and these salvia were still um, brighter, oh my God, the color combination of this next to this was absolutely insane. And really happy that I happened to have those two things planted together because it wasn't that, that way last year. I transplanted all these this spring. So these pink salvia were not here. And now that I see them next to this yarrow, I'm like, fantastic. It's really gorgeous. Right behind here, I kind of have an area that's a little empty, a little weedy, um, but there are some cosmos coming back that were reseeded from cosmos I used to have on this level. I haven't decided if I'm going to let them stay or not. We'll see how messy it looks because cosmos tend to, they're beautiful, but they tend to make a garden look a bit messy. But since they are in the back behind other plants, I think it might work in this situation. These tall spiky ones right here, not really spiky, but... Um, these are alliums that already bloomed and went to seed. So I think I'm going to leave these up. They're kind of cool, but I'm going to cut back this dead foliage. I've already done that on some of my other alliums. I just missed those. I did cut back my lupin. It's done blooming and the leaves are looking a little battered from the hailstorms that I mentioned, but, um, you know, so I'm going back and forth on this. I was planning to move it back, actually directly back, kind of where I just put this little metal frame thing that I came up with from my whiskey barrel that fell apart. Um, anyway, I was going to move it directly back there because it was so tall when it was in bloom that it really shouldn't be at the front of my border. 
but the problem is that it took it like three years to even get to that point. I think it grew from seed. And I read online that they're actually a short-lived perennial. And so, and they're also, they have a really long taproot and they're extremely difficult to transplant. So I'm questioning, is it really worth the effort of trying to transplant this with a long taproot just to push it back when it may not even come back next year? Or maybe next year will be its last year. I'm not sure. But just reading that it's short-lived and that they don't like to be transplanted, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just don't know if it's worth the effort. But I do have some younger lupin seedlings planted back here. So next year, either way, we should get some lupin. Um, this year I planted some, what are they called? I think they're called calla lilies. Right here I have a clump and another clump. Um... Hopefully they'll be tall enough to get over the yarrow. I didn't even think about that because I didn't realize the yarrow was going to get so tall this year. Last year it was maybe half that height. So we'll see when those pop up. But um, they're not something that will come back for me every year anyway, unless I were to over uh, pull them out for the winter, I think. But I'm tempted to try now that they're saying that I'm now a 6A instead of 5B for my zone. And they are in full sun and they are against a stone wall. I wonder if it would create a microclimate that might allow them to come back. So, and same for my dahlias, like I wonder if they're planted close enough to this wall, if I can just be lazy and leave them if they might come back. So maybe I'll like dig up some of them, but not all of them and do that little experiment. Right here I have two more black eyed Susans. So kind of mirroring what I had further along. This is a ground cover that gets white flowers on it in spring. Um, I kind of like it, but I also kind of feel like I might not keep that long term. It's just not doing enough for me. So we'll see. Right here has already finished its bloom and all that is a columbine. It was like a pink and a berry red. Very pretty. Um, leaving that, they get quite large in their like second, third year. So hopefully this one will be nice and big for us next year. This small rose that you see back here is like the same as that white one that's down there. Um, I explained this before, but they were originally in the same pot together. And then I thought they were what, like one plant. But then when I actually pulled them out of the pot, I realized it was just multiple different stems. So uh, anyway, that's what that is. Um, right here I have some, uh, what are they called? Button flower, I think. Cushion, pin cushion flower. Um, these just started blooming and they're looking a little bit sad because I actually transplanted these yesterday. Um, they were down here and they were half buried under that huge clump of yarrow. And I just needed to get them out from under there because the yarrow was taking up too much space. So I moved them down here and once they perk back up, I think they're going to look really cute next to this purple Veronica. Back here, I have a whole patch of orange ditch lily. Um tiger lily, whatever you want to call it. It's an Asiatic lily. It's not native to my area, but they do get beautiful orange blossoms. Um, I don't know if these are going to bloom this year because of the fact that I moved them. Up on the top on my second terrace, I'm going to zoom in for a second, I have another patch up there that does have stalks up. So it looks like I will get those blooming this year at least. Um, but again, I'm not sure about these. Right here I have a sedum, I think it's called Angelina. It's very fast growing. I just planted that yesterday. I want to get more of those actually because that would be a great thing. You know, I told you I have this problem with my broken uh, ledge. This is the kind of thing that I think would grow over it eventually and drape down and wouldn't die off in winter. So then I wouldn't have to wait until basically like midsummer to have that part of my stone disguised. Um, over here I have the same kind of setup that I had on the opposite end. I have my foxtrot penicillium grass and then in the corner we have the uh, monarda. This monarda though that you can barely see it's behind it right now is um, coal rain red so it will have red blooms and this one does not get the mold issue that I was telling you about that the other one does. I also have a hibiscus planted in front of this one. 
Um, this one gets like berry red flowers, whereas the hibiscus that's down there, I forgot to mention in front of the purple one, it gets pink flowers. This is a small patch of the oregano, same as I have planted down there. I just added it to this side to mirror what I have going on down there. Plus I had an empty space, I just kind of needed to fill. These are asters that are gonna start blooming soon. They're looking a little bit wilted because I transplanted these yesterday. This is something else that was growing down there and my yarrow started to grow over the top of it. So I needed to move it to a, a place where it had more room. And yeah, they should look good here shortly. I forget what the name of this is, but it's some kind of annual that I bought really just because of the foliage color. I don't even know if it flowers or what it's gonna look like. I don't know how big it's gonna get. I just wanted to add more dark foliage into this bed. Um, I've got some dark foliage with my potato vines, but <clears throat> yeah. Um, right here, I have some of this yarrow that's like the peachy color. And I did this different color over here because I like that with the red more than I would the pink. Um, I also want to put some of my red yarrow, the one I have down there that is mixed with the pink. I want to bring some of the red down here and sprinkle the seed. And I might have already done that. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if this starts giving us some red blooms somewhere. Like, maybe these. No, those look orange too. Anyway, that's my plan is to bring some of the red yarrow into this area as well, because it's pretty easy once it goes to seed to add it. And that's what I've done kind of like in the middle where I have that pink section. That's all from pink yarrow that I moved, you know, by seed from my other stand over there. Freaking love yarrow. It's one of the best plants ever. And it's a native in my area, so that's awesome. This is a... Artemisia, same as the um, Artemisia that I have planted on the other end. Again, mirroring what I have on the other side of the terrace. I have my lamb's ear. Uh, this is, I think it's called floss flower. I just planted this recently. I have another one down there too, the same. I just didn't mention it when I was going through. And then um, this one I just cut back. It was basically like all of these like light yellow seed heads. In fact, that's what they look like right there um, and I don't know if it will rebloom I've never tried that before so I just thought I like the way it looks better without the yellow seed head so I just thought I'll just try sharing it back and seeing if it reblooms and even if it doesn't it'll just be this pretty little green mound for the rest of the year um, so over here I have a clump of sage that I planted last year just regular old garden sage and I really like that look. Um, I did shear this back because it looks terrible after winter. And I think because I did that, it won't flower. But I'm okay with that. I'll just do that every year and keep it kind of, you know, this mounding green color. My only issue is that it's extremely similar to my lamb's ear, which is right next to it. So I think, sadly, I'm going to have to move this lamb's ear over, which is fine because I have this space here. But lamb's ear looks terrible when you move it. And it takes like a month to recover. So if I do that, it's going to look crappy for like the next month. But you know, it's like, what are you going to do? That's just what gardening is. Constantly moving stuff. Um, on this second level, I have whatever this amazing ground cover type sedum is that is has filled up this whole thing. And basically, I think I first transplanted this into this bed last spring, I want to say. And it's already, I mean, I, I literally started with little teeny shoots. I probably put, I don't know, 20 little individual little shoots in there. And this is how full it is. I love it. And it's, it gives definition to that darker foliage that's planted in there. So I've got a peony. I've got, this is a Jade Parade sand cherry bush. And it gets beautiful white flowers very early in spring. And then I have another peony over here. Um, those blue flowers you're seeing are just reseeded but bachelor's buttons. I need to pull those out. I mean, they're cute, but that's not what I want going on in there. And then I have some little weed plant with these yellow flowers that, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but I'll, I'll eventually get around to pulling that out as well. But I, I really love how that one turned out. Um, this Barberry bush, 
I promise you that one and the one behind it will be gone pretty soon. Um, it's just such a task that I don't want to do. So I continue putting it off, but it looks terrible. And I also have some weeds growing up on this side that I need to handle. Um, that is a foxtrot penicetum grass that's going to stay there. And then looking at my second terrace, I'm not going to get up and close because it's really weedy and a mess right now, but I'll just kind of briefly go through it. I have a Artemisia here. It flowered yellow. This was the first time that it flowered. So, you know, that was a surprise. I didn't know what it was going to look like, but now it looks extremely leggy and messy. Um, so I'm going to rejuvenate, cut that back. I think it will flush out with prettier foliage to, you know, go the rest of the year. Um, I have some pink salvias planted in here. These were planted mm, maybe a month ago. Um, I got those because I was so happy with how these were looking and I wanted more spring color on this second terrace because in early spring I had my beautiful purple irises going but that was pretty much the only color in this entire second terrace. Oh, I lied. There was, do you see that sweet William? It's like a really, really dark cranberry red. That was also in bloom. So I had that and then I had my purple irises. Aside from that, there was zero color on this second terrace. So that's one of the things I'm working on moving forward is trying to get more spring color up there. So I added in those pink salvias right there. And then you can't really tell because I need to shear them back. They're not in bloom, but I planted a large clump of um, like a blue or purplish salvia. Um, and those were from bigger canisters. So these were like six um, gallon size canisters, I want to say. Whereas these over here were like seven um, quart size. I'm not sure if I'm pointing right on the camera. Sorry, guys. Um, so, you know, next spring that will add some beautiful color to that layer. I still need to do something more with this side. So I'm still thinking about what can I put in over here. I don't want to just keep adding more salvias, but that is something that gave me early color and was really beautiful. And I know that when I cut them back, they'll rebloom again. So I am tempted to add more salvias also in that area, but we'll see. I'll come up with something. Um, right now I have several clumps of coneflower that are getting ready to start blooming. So that will be a lot of pink and purple color adding. And then this one right here in the front is, I believe, an Alaskan daisy. I thought I had two of those at least, um, but I'm not sure. These tall kind of oniony looking plants are drumstick alliums and I see some of them just getting ready to start opening. So by my next video, what I'm planning to do the rest of today after I'm done is working on this second terrace. So I'm going to be working on getting a lot of the weeds pulled out and also moving some more things into this border to prevent the weeds from going back in. But anyway, hopefully by my next video, you guys will get to see this drumstick allium in bloom um, and definitely all of the purple coneflower. And that's gonna add so much color to that second terrace. Um, I do have some cosmos in the second terrace that are blooming right now. And again, it's the sort of thing that looks a bit weedy, but as long as they're not at the very front of the border, if they have something pretty in front of them that's kind of I don't know, holding them in, uh, I don't know. I just think it looks better when they're toward the back a little bit. Um, and then I also need to get up there and like cut all my dead um, iris flower stalks down. Um, some of the weeds that are growing in here are wild four o'clocks and they're actually really pr pretty when they flower, but unfortunately it's just too messy looking. So it's something that I am gonna pull out as I'm weeding. I have some more purple Veronica right there, another clump of that. And then this pretty yellow flower that you're seeing, um, I know that it's a native that I planted last